Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of IndyCar on, what is this, the 27th? Well, to check the date as usual, you know me. Me and my dates never get them right first time, hang on. So we're at uh, Friday, oh sorry, Thursday the 27th. Right, okay. Thursday the 27th. This is going to be my last broadcast for a week or so because I'm going on holiday. So just a few things to say to you today. First one is IndyCar's not going to stop broadcasting. Uh, I'm not going to let the UK spooks who've been disrupting my broadcast chase me off this page. One of the things that um, both Facebook and the UK have been trying to do with IndyCar for the last few months, in fact years, uh, has been to try and reduce the amount of people who see this program. And they've been doing that in different ways. Uh, but they've also been changing the way that the viewer numbers are calculated and I've been watching the viewer numbers going down because those of you who watch the show regularly will know that it's harder and harder to keep your notifications uh, updated. In other words, some people who would normally be notified when this show goes live are not being notified and are having to try and find me in other ways. Other people are reporting they're not able to comment, not able to like. So Facebook and the spooks uh, who, who follow me around the city on a regular basis trying to disrupt the show uh, are trying to reduce the amount of uh, exposure I get. It's not going to work. I have other ways of evading these people uh, and I'll be using them to the fullest extent over the next few months right up to and including the, the new independence referendum which is definitely now coming. Uh, I also wanted to say a few words today uh, about the recent crowdfunder which I posted a link to uh, by a friend called Marianne. Now Marianne had uh, planned to help Nicola Sturgeon to raise the £20,000 which uh, Jeremy Hunt had uh, tried to cut from Nicola's budget. In other words, the, the, the UK trying to cut the amount of money available to the, the Scottish First Minister for foreign trips uh, and trade missions. Uh, now, Marianne was well-intentioned in this, but she didn't really think it through, I don't think. And in fact, it's probably not necessary for anyone to have a crowdfunder to raise money for the First Minister. And I don't think that the First Minister would be allowed to accept such a donation anyway. But that aside, the problem with this was not the fact that the crowdfunder was started without a great deal of thought. The problem was what happened afterwards. Uh, certain individuals, and one in particular, and two fake accounts started to attack Marianne it, as soon as this became apparent that she had started this crowdfunder, and a rumour was started that Marianne was somehow a crook or a fraud and was running a scam. This is not true. Uh, Marianne, four years ago at Loch Alge, had run a scheme to employ two local young people from the youth club involved in a publishing uh, business that she had started up. Now the publishing business failed, didn't deliver, uh, wasn't as successful as everybody hoped, but nobody lost any money. But the two young people involved uh, ended up out of the job and there was a bit of bad feeling. But this was four years ago. This was being touted as Marianne being a shady Swedish character and there was a, an article from a local newspaper which personally on reading it is actually libelous. It, it libels Marianne quite badly and, and it is uh, painting her as some kind of shady character who was out to defraud the local people. Not the case. Nothing of the, ca the kind ever happened. At worst, Marianne is maybe just a well-meaning person who uh, something didn't think through all of her plans. Anyway, the upshot of all of this is that beware people, if you do start any kind of crowdfund for anything to do with the SNP, but particularly to do with Nicola Sturgeon, beware because the UK trolls will attack you if you attach anything that you do to the First Minister. They're gunning for her at the moment and anybody who supports her in any way at all is fair game. Uh, and Marianne just was not prepared for the attacks that she got from two, uh, particularly two English troll accounts, which went for her in a very vicious way. She's had to shut down her crowdfunder. She is going to give whatever funds were, were put into that crowdfunder, including her own, incidentally, uh, to the SNP or to charity, but she will announce where that money will go. All right, just so that that is cleared up and you guys out there know the truth, you know me, I always try and get to the truth and I'll always try and make sure that you know what it is. 
Uh, finally, okay, so we're entering the holiday season now. I'm away for a week, so you're not really going to hear from me for a while. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen in the news over the next few weeks, but it's going to probably be the usual Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt nonsense. And uh, the, the continuing sort of drip, drip, drip of the BBC attacking the Scottish NHS, as they did again this morning, incidentally. Um, they've been claiming that the uh, Scottish NHS, almost anywhere at the moment, is either hurting individuals, you know, damaging children, uh, or calling in social service to have children taken away. This was the latest story this morning that... Uh, Several families in Scotland, a handful of them, right, a handful, I think it was about six families uh, whose children had uh, strange ailments uh, and there was a suspicion that the parents might have been harming them, called in the social services. Now this is not a fault in the system, this is the system working to protect the children from potential harm and it hurts the parents because they are they feel they're being treated or, or suspected of, of harming their own children which is very hurtful but the system is designed to make sure that the case is investigated properly and whatever is wrong with the child doesn't matter what's caused it that they get to the bottom of it and they make sure that that child is protected now that's not a failing of the NHS in Scotland that's the system of child protection working but it does upset parents to have their children sometimes taken into care or to be accused of harming them would be a deeply hurtful thing for any parent to go through. However, it is not an SNP bad story and it's not a, a feeling in the NHS that that system is working. It's just an unfortunate side effect of a child protection system which puts the child at the centre, not the parents. Okay, so. We know that the BBC in Scotland is going to continue its attacks on the NHS. They also continued the attack on the Queen Elizabeth Hospital this morning with this repeated idea that somehow or other pigeons outside of the hospital have caused the death of two patients inside the hospital. No link to this has been proven. The fact that it was actually one the patient who contracted the disease which has been linked to pigeon faces but it didn't say that that was what had caused it. The other patient had a similar uh, diagnosis, but they were not certain what the illness was. The BBC is reporting this as though the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is infested with pigeons and they're causing the deaths of patients. This, again, is not the case. Despite the fact that the BBC was showing pictures of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in all its glory, and next to that is this old building with pigeons flying around it. And the, the clear implication of the BBC's editing is that somehow or other the Queen Elizabeth Hospital is infested with pigeon droppings and people are dropping like flies as a result. Don't believe a word of it. It's clever editing. Uh, and the BBC is, again, not fact-checking what they're doing. They're just presenting the same old story, regurgitated again, with new dates for new investigations. But the thing is, nobody knows what caused this man to contract this disease. Nobody knows what the vector was. Nothing has been proven wrong with the hospital. The hospital is going through a rigorous uh, system of checks to make sure that there is no way that anybody could come into contact with a pigeon inside the hospital. Now I know that in a big building like a hospital, occasionally birds can fly in through those rotating doors and get into the atrium. And occasionally you will see small birds get inside hospitals, but that doesn't prove anything and it doesn't prove that the hospital is unsafe. So again, just the usual uh, business as usual from the BBC, try to take down the Scottish NHS every single day of the week. There's another new freedom of information request. Some new something has come to light. Some complaint about the NHS is always featured in the BBC's news in the morning uh, on the broadcasts with the breakfast show. It is, uh, in the old days it used to be murders and football. Now it's Scottish NHS harming people. That's basically what the BBC likes to report now every morning in Scotland. It gets tiresome and it's absolutely counterproductive. It just drives people away from BBC programming and it's going to continue to do so. Anyway, that's about it for today. I'm heading off uh, to very hot climbs tomorrow. Uh, the weather forecast for the rest of the week is excellent so I'm anticipating having a nice 
restful holiday. I'll be, I hope, presenting uh, Scotland at 7 this evening uh, in the final show that I do before the holidays. So I will hopefully see you this evening on Scotland at 7. Let me know uh, how the uh, how the broadcast today is coming coming through. Has there been any interference today? I've been trying some new uh, avoidance techniques today, and I've been looking at how the spooks, the UK spooks, have been tracking me around uh, Glasgow while I've been broadcasting, and how they know where I am and where I'm broadcasting. So hopefully today you've had a clear broadcast, and you should be able to see and hear this perfectly well. I'm not going to move the IndyCar show off this platform and I am not going to close the IndyCar page down. I have experimented with using my personal page but I think I know how the UK spooks are getting to me now and I have a whole raft of different methods for evading them now. So hopefully you'll be able to see IndyCar perfectly clearly and hear every single word from now on and the UK spooks will not be able to do anything about it. The only way they can interfere with your enjoyment of this program is if they start interfering with your broadband and your Wi-Fi at home because what I'm going to do from now on is not going to be easy for them to find. I'll see you all later. Have a great time uh, over the next week. Oh, incidentally, a little shout out for you. Alana Mora from the Save Loch Lomond uh, campaign has asked me to put a shout out to anybody who has experience of uh, traditional wooden boat building. Uh, I had put to Alana the idea of a, a new proposal for how to use Loch Lomond Shores uh, and one of those proposals was to start a, a new boat building industry at the site to create a specific Loch Lomond yacht, a new design using uh, traditional timber building techniques to create a fleet of Loch Lomond yachts specifically for the loch for the training of young people on how to sail to set up a municipal sailing school which would be free for youngsters to learn and, and older people to learn to sail and disabled people as well and to build up a fleet of perhaps a hundred of these Loch Lomond yachts to be built by Scottish craftsmen and women at the site at Loch Lomond. So if you know or if you are a traditional boat builder get in touch with Alana Mora who is at the uh, Save Loch Lomond website and let her know if you have the skills to help set something like this up. I'll be back again, as I say, in about seven days and hopefully we'll try and put together a counter-proposal, something which will make Flamingo Land look like what it is, which is a cheap, tacky uh, holiday park. We don't want that in our national park. We want something which is unique to Loch Lomond and which will add to the beauty of the place without wrecking the, uh, the, the, the amenity of the national park. And sailing is the ideal way of doing that. It lives in peace with nature, it creates jobs, it creates new skills, and it provides uh, an important focal point, particularly for disadvantaged young people, to learn something new. And sailing is a sport that anyone can do. And the loch would be the ideal place to set this up. Anyway, let me know if you have skills like that, and we'll try to put together a proposal which will chase uh, the, the flamingo land lot away and give us something that we really want to see at Loch Lomond to protect the wildlife, to create some jobs and to do something uniquely Scottish, something unique to Scotland which will provide uh, a spectacle for people who visit the loch to watch these beautiful boats that have been specifically designed to race the loch every day. Uh, it'll be a beautiful sight. Anyway, I'll see you all later. Have a, have a great week. Uh, I'll catch up with you tonight on Scotland at 7 before I go. All right, have a great week. Bye for now.